I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm so excited to be sharing this word today with you. I know that our lives will never be the same again. Today I want to share with you about the power of Holy Communion. Many of us have been taking Holy Communion from our Sunday school days. Others from the day we were born again. But we are not partaking fully in what God has given us to partake on. You know, we are living in the times where health is the new wealth. Health is the new wealth. Being healthy has become the new standard of living more than anything else. You know, salvation without divine health is incomplete. Salvation without divine health is incomplete. You know, we can be blessed with all material things. We can be blessed with all the houses, the cars, and have all the number of children that we need, but without the ability to enjoy the blessing because of lack of good health, it's not good. Many of us believe in the finished works of Calvary, the salvation, the forgiveness of the forgiveness of sins, the redemption through the blood of Jesus. However, many who are in the body of Christ are still sick. They are still in hospitals. When I, when I speak about sickness, I'm not talking about your coughing, your headache. I'm talking about chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, and all, and all these other chronic diseases. And these are the things that as children of God, we are not supposed to have them. They are not our portion. We cannot be sick. We just cannot be sick and be tormented, be oppressed by this satanic, devilish, demonic spirits of sicknesses. And the Holy Communion has all the answers to the problems with our health. Health is the greatest blessing that we could enjoy, that we should have while we are still on earth. Without it, without it, there's no way that we can enjoy the blessings of God. Imagine God has blessed you with a new boy, a son, but you can't stand up, run, and play with, around with, with your children. God has blessed you with a lot of cars, you can't drive them. You have a house, but you are forever lying in one room. Because of sickness, you cannot go to any other room because you are, you, are, you are in your sick bed day and night. And yet, Jesus Christ died for your health also. Today, everyone is very much afraid of the so-called I will not mention by name, COVID. If a person coughs in their minds, 
they already condemned themselves to death. They see themselves being buried. Just by a mere cough. We are a chosen generation. We are sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are set apart. We are covenanted people. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus through his covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross has done it all for us. Jesus' ministry when he walked on earth, he spent most of his time healing people and resurrecting those who were dead. I want to put it to you today that a hundred percent of all people that Jesus Christ resurrected, none of them died of step wound from the spear or from the sword. They all died because of sicknesses and diseases. They were tormented by the devils of sicknesses and diseases. And most of the time Jesus Christ came he, and the Bible said and he healed them all. Hallelujah. So how can we still go through the same thing? And the funny part we are taking Holy Communion and still remaining sick. So I want to put it to you that it is not the taking of Holy Communion that heals. It is the revelation behind the taking that heals your understanding, what you know about what you are doing. So today, I want us to just go deep a little bit and make you understand the activity that we do every day. Hallelujah. Can we just go to the scriptures? Second, First Peter 2.24 I just want to share with you something. I want to try by all means not to preach or to teach. I want us to have a conversation. The Bible says, 1 Peter 2.24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. I, want, I will stop there by the comma. He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Check this. His body and the tree. Galatians said, cursed is everyone who hangs what? On the tree. So that the blessing of Abraham might come to us, to us the Gentiles. Let us go, that we having died to sin, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed not we will be healed by whose stripes we were healed meaning healing is there already how we partake in healing is through revelation many of us when we partake in holy communion we are very much aware of the blood that this is the blood of the new covenant. But on the body side, this my body is broken for you. We are not descending correctly to understand what is it that Jesus meant when he said, this is my body which is broken for you. You know, in his earthly ministry, Jesus Christ, there was never a time where he said to his disciples, please go preach, I'm sick. And there was never a time that among the 12 disciples, just by them spending time with Jesus Christ, none of them were sick. There is no record in the Bible where it is written that and this Peter fell sick or James fell sick. None when they were with Jesus. 
Jesus was the healing body fight. He was the healing walking on earth. He, he, he was not only the healer, he was the healing himself. The Bible says that the crowd pressed on him so that others can touch him to receive what? The healing. The famous story of the woman with the issue of the blood. She did not go to Jesus and ask for prayer. She believed that if I, only I can touch him, I will be healed. And today, there's something that I do under. The church is called the body of Christ. The children of Israel touched the body of Jesus Christ and were healed. And today the church is called the body of Christ and sick. Something's not right. Something's definitely not right. The church is afraid of COVID together with the world. Let me tell you, we are the body of Christ. There should be someone out there who should say, if I can, if I can only go to that child of God, if I can only go to that Muzalwane and just touch him, I will be healed because he spent time with Christ, in Christ, by Christ, and he is in Christ. Today, the body of Christ is the one that is sick because we, do not, we don't understand the double power in Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. We'll, we'll go to the scriptures. When, when God took out the children of Israel from Egypt, Psalm 105, verse 37, says, they came out with silver and gold, I'm paraphrasing, and none of them was feeble, meaning none of them were sick. They were all healthy. Just by taking, eating the lamb. Can I just go deeper into that? The Bible says they were instructed in Exodus 12 to take the lamb Holy, roast it holy with its entrails, with everything inside. And they ate the lamb. Let me tell you what the roasting meant. The roasting was a symbol of the judgment by fire upon the body of Christ. And the entrails, meaning that. We, we have been healed from the inside out. That's the reason why after the children of Israel partook in the eating of the lamb, the Bible says none of them were sick. 2.5 million people who left Egypt, all of them were healthy. None. Their health was even transferred to their clothes. <laughs> I mean, do you see what happened when they ate the body of the lamb? Their health was even transferred to their clothes. Their clothes did not worn off. Their shoes grew with them. That is the power of the body of the lamb. They received supernatural strength to walk in the desert just by partaking in the body of the lamb. How about we partaking in the body of Jesus Christ, taking Holy Communion? What power will come to you? You see, the Bible says Jesus Christ was beaten 39 stripes. It also said he took all our infirmities in his body. He took them all. That's the reason why when he was taking Holy Communion with the disciples, 
When he said to them, this is my body, which is broken for you. They did not ask him questions. What did you mean by this is my body, which is broken for you? They knew that he's giving them his divine health. They understood, they understood it very well. But to, in today's church, we have taken the blood, which is the cup, we have taken the cup and lapped it together with the body without understanding what is happening. The, the Bible says in Ephesians, said, this is the blood of the new covenant. And the body. What does this mean? It means that every time when you take the body of Jesus Christ, you are repairing your own body through the divine body of Jesus Christ. The Bible says when the children of Egypt ate the lamb, there was no one blind, sick, or even lame. It didn't matter how many days they spent in slavery, how many years they spent in slavery, but the moment they partake in the eating the lamb, they receive divine health. You see, if you read Matthew 8, verse 18, you will see who Jesus Christ was. Matthew 8, verse 16, I mean. It reads that so when evening had come, they brought you many who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirit with a word. <laughs> he cast out the spirit with a what? With a word. And he healed all who were sick. That it might be fulfilled. 17, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Child of God, I'm sure that wherever you are, you have prepared your Holy Communion. I want to put it to you today that after partaking in today's Holy Communion, every sickness every infirmity will disappear in your body because Jesus Christ took them. Okay. Can I just push forward a little bit? Why are so many Christians sick today? Paul said it clearly in the word. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine to 30. He said, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Many are not discerning the Lord's body. We not understanding what is the purpose of the Lord's body. We are understanding the blood. That the blood has brought us back. We understand by his, by, that the blood has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. But there is something that we need to do. Discerning the Lord's body. That there is an investor is a person. For this reason, many are sick. Not for these reasons. Which reason? Discerning the Lord's body. For the lack of discerning of the Lord's body. For the Lord's body. Many are sick. What is the reason? To take into account what does this body of Jesus Christ mean to me? As I'm breaking this bread, what are the benefits to my health? What are the benefits to my body? What do I get when I eat his body? Because Psalm 103 verse 2 to 5, verse 2 to 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, he said, who has what? Forgiven you all your what? Sins and heal all your diseases. So we see the blood is on the forgiveness of sins and the body on the healing of all the diseases. 
Are we together, church? Hallelujah. The, the blood is on the forgiveness of sins. So, when we are not discerning the body of Christ, because we are lumping you together, what did you do? I took Holy Communion, ate the bread, and drink the, the blood. But what is it that is in the bread? Let us talk what is it, what is it that is in the bread. In the bread, you, you, in your hand, you are carrying the love, the fullness of the love of God. You are carrying the body that was beaten. The 39 stripes that were given to Jesus Christ, you are carrying them on this bread. On this bread because Jesus Christ said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this bread, you are proclaiming the Lord's death till you come. Meaning, in the spiritual realm, as you partake in the bread, his death becomes as fresh as now. Hallelujah. Your healing comes when? Now. Because Jesus Christ has been beaten for you when? Now. So that is descending of the Lord's body. Are we together? I'm going to repeat. As you take the Lord's body, in your spirit, man, know that you are carrying the body of Jesus Christ that was beaten for you and the body that has carried all your infirmities and sicknesses. As you break this body, you ask, it's a symbol of his body that was beaten. As you eat this bread, every divine health, supernatural health become your portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The early church understood the breaking of bread. Acts 2.42 says they fellowship together daily breaking bread. It didn't say they were not, they were, they were taking Holy Communion. They were breaking bread. They understood the meaning of the body of Christ. Acts 2 42 said, and they continue steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers. So they spent time descending the body of Christ in taking Holy Communion, in the breaking of bread and prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hallelujah. They spent time breaking the bread and descending his body. Can, can, can we just go back a little bit in, 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 in what, it, what it means to descend his body? Matthew 26, verse 26, Jesus Christ said, take it. This is my body. And when they took it, they ate it. None of them got sick. None of them got sick. So wherever you are, child of God at home, I want you to understand this. That you have been healed more than 2,000 years ago. Whatever that you are suffering from is not your portion. Paul said, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us descend through applying his word. As I take the bread, see Jesus carrying all your infirmities. And transferring to you supernatural health. As you hold the bread, the bread, see Jesus' body being beaten up so that you can receive divine health. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, as you see that, 
The moment you begin to descend the Lord's body, deliverance takes place. Because every little devil behind your sickness will know that this one knows who the master is. This one knows who, the one who died for him or her. Every little devil will begin to surrender to the name of Jesus. Because you have the understanding of the, enter, the fullness of Jesus Christ upon your life. You see, the Bible says the woman, the issue of the blood, spent all her money. She suffered many things from many, uh, from many physicians. She did not get better. She got worse. But the moment she made a decision to touch the helm of his garment, that was in the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's something that many people don't say. The helm of his garment, the helm of the garment, it was not just saying in the end. Jesus Christ was wearing the garment. The helm was in the body of Jesus Christ. The moment she touched it, she got healed. How about us? We are not touching, but eating. Mm. We are not touching the body, but eating this body. You don't get only healing. You get renewed. You receive vigor in your life, and you receive the fullness of life thereof. What you have in your hand, it is not just bread in the spiritual realm. What you have in your hand, it is not just normal bread. No. It is the body that is ready to infuse new power and life in your body. We believe so much in the forgiveness of sins. Because the blood of Jesus Christ has done that. But when it comes to the body, we are failing. We are not believing enough in his body. You see, he said, as often as you eat this bread and take this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. What is to proclaim? The moment you touch the cup and the bread, in the spiritual realm, all the demons and the principalities when we have this revelation, they see their defeat on the cross. They see Colossians 2.15 that God has disarmed all the powers and principalities that were raised against us. He made a bold and public display of them, triumphing over them in him and in the cross. The moment you, you eat, that's why he's saying, that's why Jesus Christ said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaiming the Lord's death. What is to proclaim? You are saying that victory in Golgotha is still victory today. Why? In the spiritual realm, there is no time. There is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow. In the spiritual realm, it's always now. As you partake in the Holy Communion, it's like Jesus Christ being crucified when now. Your victory is for when? Now. The body of Christ is taking all your infirmities when? Now. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? Mark 7. Verse 26 to 28. He said, the woman, okay, let's start it from, from 24. Mark 7, 24. From, so from there he arose and went to the region of Tyre, and Sidon, and he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, 
a Syrophoenician by birth. And she kept asking him to cast out demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said, said to her, let the children be filled first. For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. And, and he said to her, For this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. Jesus here is referring healing and deliverance as the children's bread. Why did Jesus Christ said it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs? Jesus Christ was saying it is not good to give divine health to those who are not in the covenant. Because salvation was for the Jews until they rejected it. So he was saying, this bread is not meant for you. However, the woman said, even the crumbs, even the crumbs are okay. And she's saying, it doesn't matter. Even this little body of Christ, as long as I'm permitted, let my child be delivered. I'm telling you, bread is for your healing. You are a covenanted child of God. You have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. When you partake in the Holy Communion, as you eat his body, as you drink his blood, just know that bread is for my healing. I'm not a little dog anymore. I am grafted into salvation through the finished works of Calvary. This bread is for your body. This bread is for your healing. As you partake and eat it, you need to proclaim that my daughter is, is being healed. My son is being healed. My husband is being restored. My wife is being restored. As I take this bread and drink his blood, my, the body of Jesus Christ, that is supernatural health, is being, that supernatural health is being transferred to my body. It's been transferred to my daughter's life. Hallelujah. You see, Holy Communion has double benefits. The blood and the bread. Two edged what? Sword. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts 10 38 says, okay, can I go? Acts 10 38. You know, I love this scripture. It said, and Jesus Christ, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. You see, healing is a demonic oppression. So when you eat his body, deliverance becomes your portion. You become free from what? Demonic oppression. The Bible said he healed all who were oppressed by the devil. I want you to receive this word raw as it is. He healed all who were oppressed by the devil. If there is any devilish, devilish oppression in your body, hypertension, cancer, bladder complication. I don't know. You, you, you can't breathe properly. Your lungs have been affected by the so-called COVID. I want to tell you today that as you take this bread, this demonic oppression called COVID will lose your lungs, to lose your body. You will live free of that demonic oppression. You will walk in health and in power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said, he walked around and he said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Take it. 
This is my body, which is broken for you. As you eat the body of Christ, I want you to know that you are as good as someone going to the storeroom of heaven, taking the new part. If your lungs are affected as you eat this body, see yourself receiving new lungs. If your heart is affected as you eat this body, see yourself receiving a new heart. If whatever, if your prostate is affected as you eat his body, see yourself receiving a new protest. Whatever part of your body, as you eat the body of Christ, as you take his blood, see yourself walking into the storeroom of heaven, coming back with new leaves of life. Hallelujah. All disease, diseases are due to devil's oppression. Luke 6, 19. I want you to see what Jesus Christ was doing. Luke 6, 19. Say, and the whole multitude sought to touch him. For power went out from him and healed them all. Wow. Where did the power went out from to heal them all? From his body. You see, and the whole multitude sought to touch him. And power, for power went out from him and healed them all. And Jesus saying, the very same body that was touched and healed them all, by faith, take it. Take it, for this is my body is broken for you. Hallelujah. I see someone getting healed today. I see somebody's mom getting healed today. I see somebody's mom getting healed from, from arthritis. I see somebody being healed from cancer. The body of Christ, as you partake in this Holy Communion, as you eat his body, you, I'm telling you, you're going to wake up with new vigor of life. I don't care. They say COVID is strong. No, 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 no. Nothing is stronger than Jesus. For the Earth is the Lord's and his fullness death, and they that dwell therein. And the very same Lord said, Take, eat my body. Wow. I mean, who is like you, Jesus? Who is like you, Jesus? You did not only die for us, your blood was not only shed for our salvation. Jesus Christ knew that salvation without good health is incomplete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he says, take it, this my body, he was imparting his life, health, and wholeness to our bodies. This one, you have to write it down. When he said, take it, this my body, he was, partaking, he was imparting what? His life, health, wholeness to our bodies. We are not, it is not just a religious cliche. No. No. I've taught about the blood a lot of time. But today, I know that I'm focusing on the body. I want you to know that there is something in his body too. 1 Corinthians 11.23 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night was betrayed, took bread when he has given thanks. He broke it and said, Take it. This is my, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The remembrance, it is not like a historical remembrance. No. Do this in a revelation that of what I have done for you. When he said, do this in remembrance of me, say, do this with discernment and revelation of what I have done for you. So you need to remember, okay. He said, this is my body is broken for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me? What remembrance? What will happen to me if I remember? No, it's not a bit of remembering. Revelation. What is it that Jesus Christ has done for you in the cross? When he's, when he's he carried all your infirmities, what has happened? The disciples, they looked at him. They never asked him a question. They took and ate the bread with excitement. And 25, he said, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till you come. What is to proclaim? You are declaring all the benefits of the cross till he come back again. Meaning, he won't come down again and pray for you. You withdraw health in taking Holy Communion. You withdraw your, your wealth in taking Holy Communion. Why? The Bible said when the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, they were given what? Silver and gold. After what? The blood. Hallelujah. So there is double benefits. There is health and wealth. In Holy Communion. So I want to talk to those who are saying it's COVID times. We are losing jobs. No. Take Holy Communion. Declare your health and wealth, life and livelihood. God has given that to you already. If the Lamb that was slain in Egypt was the shadow of the lamb to come. I think the real is stronger than the shadow. I believe the real is stronger than the shadow. And in closing, in Egypt, they were instructed to take the lamb at night time, standing up, waiting for their salvation. And Jesus Christ, that's why it's called the last supper, it was at night. He was preparing us for the night season. Night season. If we go to Isaiah 60, let's go to Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Say, arise, shine, for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Two. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen upon you. When we take Holy Communion, the Last Supper, it was taken at night. Jesus Christ was preparing us for this night season. But he's saying, the light, because he's the light, the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon us. As you take this Holy Communion, do not mind the night season. Do not mind the pandemic that is happening around you. Just declare that I'm arising, I'm shining, for the light of has come, and the glory of the Lord is rising upon me. As I take this Holy Communion, I'm proclaiming his death, Till he comes, the principalities will know that that one has the light. The darkness will cover the whole of Egypt, but it cannot enter the covenant people, Goshen, who are the Israelites. They ate the lamb. Today we are eating the bread. We are drinking his blood. And the Passover blood of the lamb. Sickness, death shall pass over. Favor shall be your portion. You know, as you take Holy Communion, begin to declare and decree that favor is my portion. The Bible says, before they leave Egypt, they were highly favored. They were given articles of gold and silver. I want you to know that Holy Communion has the power of favor in it. As you take Holy Communion, you receive favor. You, you are not just taking bread 
Let us kick out religion out of this and restore back the power in Holy Communion. Favor. You take Holy Communion before you go to the interview. They favor you. You take Holy Communion. Receive favor. I remember in closing again, my father was very sick. He was growing thinner and thinner. My father is a big man. But he grew thinner and thinner. I could literally see him that my father is dying. I prayed all the prayers that I knew. Until one day, I asked God, what is it that we must do to make my father live? He said, call all your siblings. Let them come back home. It was December. He said, call all your family. Let them partake in Holy Communion. I called all of them. I said, we are going to take Holy Communion for him. He's going to live. He, said, he, will, not, he will not die. We took Holy Communion as a family. The power of God descended upon that place. As we're busy praying, excitement came in my spirit, man. And Holy Spirit said to me, take a photo. When you come back Easter, it was December. When you come back Easter, you will have regained his weight, lost weight. When I went back home Easter, my father was back to his normal weight. The power of Holy Communion. That was, I think, then. A few weeks ago, my daughter fell sick. Murabeiri. We called the family doctor. And he prescribed us uh, the, the medication. As my wife went around looking for the medication, she could not find it because there was a bug in the area. So most children needed that medication. It was finished from most pharmacists. It was only found in this camp. As my wife was busy running around, Holy Spirit said to me, no, give, give this girl Holy Communion. I gave her Holy Communion. She became better. My wife came with, holy, with the medicine, twice antibiotics. I'm telling you, we gave her antibiotic twice. By the next day, when we gave her Holy Communion again, she was totally healed. She only drank her antibiotic twice. Like when I say twice, I mean two measures. Two, two times. She was healed by the power of the bread. Because as often as you eat this bread and take this cup, you're proclaiming the Lord's death till he come. There is power in Holy Communion. Descend the Lord's body. Remember, as you eat it, remember everything that Jesus Christ went through. You know, in the Jewish, in the Jewish culture, when they celebrate Passover, there is a bread called marza. That bread called marza is eaten during Passover. And this bread is unleavened, is baked, and is pierced with holes and has striped. That bread, to me, the marza, it symbolizes how the body of Christ, the body of Christ was pierced with the crown of thorns and on the side with the spear and it was it has thrived. We are going to take Holy Communion now. We are going to take Holy Communion now. I want you I want you to wherever you are at home remember everything that we have said. I want you to start making declarations wherever you are. Talk to the sick part in your body. Talk to the sick part in your body. Begin to say as you, as you eat this bread, you are being restored. Begin to talk to any sick part in your body. Talk to any sick part in your body. If you know someone who needs healing, talk. Declare healing upon that person's life. 
I'm telling you, I've declared healing upon my daughter. I declared healing upon my father's life using this bread. I saw them being restored. And I want you, wherever you are, by faith, believe that this is the body that was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him. Begin to declare healing upon your body. Declare healing upon every person. If you are not sick, stand in a gap for, for, for someone. As we are taking this Holy Communion, I want us to also stand in, in the gap for all those who are hospitalized in hospital, be it with COVID or any other ailment. Let us stand in a gap for them. Let us declare and decree that as we break this body, as we drink his blood, they are partaking in the supernatural health of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hold your bread wherever you hold it. Continue to declare. 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 Hold it and declare. Father, we thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus Christ and in his body. We thank you, mighty God. For Father, you said as often as we eat your body and drink your blood, we proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Heavenly Father, we thank you, mighty God, that the merciless stripes that were on the back of Jesus Christ have made us whole today. The, his body that was pierced has made us holy again. The Bible says, Heavenly Father, that the crowd... Heavenly Father went touching his body and they were all made whole. We thank you that Lord Jesus Christ, you instructed that as often as we eat this bread and drink your cup, we are proclaiming your death. Heavenly Father, even to this morning, we are proclaiming that whosoever is partaking in this holy communion is being healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. Let us eat the bread. He said, in the same manner, he also took the cup. After supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till you come. Let us drink the blood of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. I pray for all those mighty God who are watching me through media. Father, let them receive divine healing, divine health through the body of Jesus Christ. Let them receive divine healing and divine health, mighty God. For Father, you are faithful. Your word shall not come back to you void. Your word shall always accomplish that which you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the thing that was said it. We thank you, mighty God, for divine healing. We thank you, Father, for restoration of health. Yes, Lord, I thank you that kidney is being restored, that liver is being restored. Yes, Lord, that stomach cancer is being healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That migraine is losing that person now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you are faithful. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you for the double benefits in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read for you Psalms. Psalms 103, verse 2 to 3. It's praise my spirit that I must read it for you. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? That's the blood of Jesus Christ. Who heals all your diseases. That's the body of Christ. The blood is for forgiveness. So it doesn't matter who did what in your bloodline. Whether the disease that you are going through is, is a bloodline disease. Somebody has, has diabetes. The Bible says we who forgives all our iniquities. Iniquity is the bloodline sin. And also says, who heals all our diseases? That's the body of Jesus Christ. As we break his body, all our diseases are healed. We are restored. 
Hallelujah. Keep on meditating upon, up, upon this message. Share this message to many as possible. I believe that this is the word in season. This is the word that every person should know and hear. In Jesus' name, amen.